C'est un peu tôt pour le champagne. All right, good afternoon. Apologies for the late start. Um, after we're done here and you have Brendan, that at 1 p.m. we're resetting for a briefing by Jean-Pierre Lacroix, the Under Secretary General for Peace Operations. He'll be here in the room uh, to brief you on um, peacekeeping operations in Mali, the Central African Republic, as well as other issues related to peacekeeping. Um, as you will have seen, uh, in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, a um, WFP uh, delegation was attacked and three uh, people uh, were, died. The victims have been identified as the Italian ambassador to the Democratic Republic of the Congo, uh, an Italian embassy official, as well as a WFP uh, driver, national staff member. I do expect a formal statement shortly, but I can tell you we, of course, all send our deepest condolences uh, to our colleagues at the uh, Italian Diplomatic Service, as well as to uh, the World Food Program and the families of all those who died. Um, speaking at a, vi <coughs> at a video uh, message at the opening of the 46th session of the Human Rights Council, the Secretary General said the pandemic has deepened pre-existing divides, vulnerabilities, and inequalities. The failure to ensure equity in vaccination efforts, he added, is the latest moral outrage. Vaccine equity affirms human rights. Vaccine nationalism denies it. Turning to the issue of racism, Mr. Guterres called for global coordinated action to defeat the grave and growing dangers of resurgent neo-Nazis, Nazis, white supremacy, as well as racially and ethnically motivated terrorism. He also called for a special focus on safeguarding the rights of minority communities, and we continue to push for policies that fully respect human rights, religious and cultural and unique human identity, he added. Ending on a positive note, the Secretary General said the pandemic recovery gives us an opportunity to generate momentum for transformation. Now is the time to recover better, guided by human rights hum and human dignity for all, he concluded. Uh, this morning, he also spoke by pre-recorded video message to the opening of the UN Environment Assembly. He said governments and people need to understand in their very DNA that all environmental, social, and economic challenges are interlinked, and they must be tackled together. The Secretary General stressed that we have no choice but to transform how our economies and societies value nature, and we must put the health of the planet at the center of our plans and policies. Mr. Guterres also told participants at the Assembly that the UN is doing everything it can to support all UN meetings that are occurring virtually this year, including the Biodiversity Summit scheduled for Kunming, China, and the COP26 Glasgow in Great Britain to ensure that all countries can participate in negotiations. We all know that words are not enough. Commitments must be underpinned by clear and credible plans. <clears throat> And you'll recall on Friday afternoon, he also spoke at the U.S. with the U.S. Uh, Special Envoy for Climate, John Kerry, at the UNA-USA's Global Engagement Summit, and he welcomed the U.S.'s re-entry into the Paris Climate Agreement. And tomorrow, the Secretary General will address a special session of the Security Council on the issue of climate. We will get you those remarks as soon as we can later today. For your review, <clears throat> on Myanmar, in his remarks to the Human Rights Council, this, Mr. Guterres said you can see that you can see in the country the undermining of democracy, the use of brutal force, arbitrary arrest, repression in all its manifestations. It's all coming together with a perfect storm of upheaval, he said. He called on the mil Myanmar military to stop the repression immediately, as well as to release prisoners, end the violence, respect human rights, and the will of the people that were recently expressed in an election. The Secretary General stressed that coups have no place in our modern world. And in a tweet over the weekend, he called the use of lethal force, intimidation, and harassment against all peaceful demonstrators unacceptable. The UN country team also expressed its profound concern over the events on Saturday in Mandalay, in which two people were reportedly killed and dozens wounded when security forces use lethal force against demonstrators. The team said the use of excessive force against demonstrators by is must stop and that the fundamental rights for peaceful assembly must be respected, along with other human rights, such as freedom of speech. For its part, UNICEF said one of the 
uh, two people reportedly killed in Mandalay was a child. UNICEF spoke out against the use of force against demonstrators and called on security forces to prioritize the protection and safety of children and young people. And lastly, uh, but not least, the Secretary General Special Envoy, Christine Schreiner Bergner, also expressed her solidarity with the people of Myanmar. She stressed that the will of the people shall be the basis of the authority of government with the will of the people of Myanmar having been expressed by the dis elections in November, and she continues her contacts with various parties. And turning to Yemen, the special envoy, Martin Griffiths, is in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia today, where he's expected to meet in the next few days with Yemeni and Saudi officials and diplomats. This visit is part of his efforts to achieve a nationwide ceasefire, alleviate the suffering of Yemeni people, and resume all politi the political process. Meanwhile, the fifth meeting of the Supervisory Committee on the Implementation of the Prisoner and Detainee Exchange Agreement uh, between the parties uh, in Yemen concluded yesterday. During the talks, the parties discussed strategies and possibilities to fulfill their commitments under the Stockholm Agreement. Although the parties did not agree to release to releases during the second ra this round of talks, they are committed to keep discussion uh, and the parameters of future expanded release operation. Martin Griffith said he was disappointed and urged the parties to continue their discussions and consultations. And today, the emergency relief coordinator, Mark Lowcock, made, virtual vi made a virtual visit uh, to Yemen. Uh, he, um, he spoke uh, by video conference, by phone, to families in many different parts of the country, from Sana to Marib. Mr. Lokok also met COVID-19 first responders and discussed the economic crisis with the governor of the Central Bank of Aden. This, of course, is in the run-up to March 1st, when the UN will convene a virtual high-level pledging event for the humanitarian crisis in Yemen, which will be co-hosted by the governments of Sweden and Switzerland. The event will mobilize resources to address the devastating needs of millions of people across the country for humanitarian assistance. As you know, the humanitarian assistance in Yemen, the humanitarian crisis in Yemen remains the worst in the world. More than 20 million people require some form of humanitarian protection or assistance, including 12.1 million who are in acute need, and that's according to a humanitarian overview. Um, turning to Ethiopia, the UN Emergency Relief Coordinator, uh, Mark Lokok, took a virtual visit to Mekele on Friday, and that's the capital of, uh, of Tigray. The goal of the visit uh, was to assess the impact of the conflict on the humanitarian situation in Tigray by hearing the personal experiences and observations of aid workers on the ground. Despite some improvements in the humanitarian response, Ongoing insecurity, bureaucratic obstacles, and the presence of armed groups are seriously hampering the delivery of assistance in rural areas. As a result, the humanitarian response continues to be drastically inadequate compared to the magnitude of the needs across the region. We and our partners continue to engage at the highest levels with the government of Ethiopia to negotiate access and we renew the call for full access to aid organizations working in Tigray to scale up the response while ensuring that the assistance is principled and based on needs. In addition to access challenges, we need urgent funding in areas such as health, water, sanitation, protection, and we call on the international community to step forward and provide the necessary funding. I do have that statement now that I had mentioned on the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The Secretary General strongly condemns today's attack against the joint field mission of the World Food Program in Kimbumba, near Goma. Uh, the attack was uh, perpetrated by unidentified armed combatants. The attack resulted in the killing of three people, including the Italian ambassador to the DRC, his bodyguard, and a WFP national staff member. The Secretary General expresses his deep condolences to the families of the deceased, as well as the government of Italy and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. He further expresses his solidarity with the World Food Program colleagues and the entire United Nations team in the country. The Secretary General calls on the government of the Democratic Republic of the Congo to investigate swiftly this heinous targeting 
of a UN joint field mission and to bring the perpetrators to justice. He reaffirms that the United Nations will continue to support the Congolese government and the people in their efforts to bring about peace and stability, especially in the east of the country. Um, the Security Council held a uh, open video conference on Somalia and heard from the Secretary General Special Representative James Swan. He told council members that the growing political tensions threaten Somalia's state building progress and even security unless they're resolved through dialogue and compromise in the interests of the country. Unfortunately, Mr. Swan said, instead, we are seeing increased brinkmanship, pressure tactics, and the tests of strength that can only heighten risks. He noted that this is a tense moment in Somalia as both rhetoric and actions are escalating. Mr. Swan said the Somali people have waited long enough to see progress and it remains fragile. He urged all of Somalia's political leaders to pull back from confrontation and to avoid risky take winner take all tactics. Instead, this is a time to instead he said this is a time to pursue dialogue and compromise to reach an inclusive and credible political agreement to hold elections as soon as possible based on the 17th September model. This afternoon um, the council members, and you will hear from uh, the head of our UN mission in Haiti, Helen Lalim. She will be, uh, she will present the uh, Secretary General's latest report and will brief council members on recent developments. Also on Haiti, I was asked uh, about the kidnapping of two uh, Dominican citizens, and I can tell you that we have seen the news uh, of this kidnapping out of Port-au-Prince. The two Dominican uh, citizens were part of a film crew as well as their interpreter. Uh, we are following the situation with concern and hope they will be swiftly released safe and sound. A quick update from Cabo Verde, where we don't, that we don't really often get updates from there. Uh, our team on the ground is proud to inform that the country is confirmed as one of the first African countries to receive the first allocation of COVID-19 under the COVAX facility. In the next few weeks, Cabo Verde will be able to purchase and deploy vaccines for nearly 200,000 people, which represents 35% of the population. The focus will be on the most vulnerable groups. For the past four months, the World Health Organization, UNICEF, under the leadership of the resident coordinator, Ana Patricia Grassa, have been working with the World Bank to support the government to de develop a national vaccination plan and apply for COVAX. Last week, the World Bank also approved an additional funding of $5 million uh, for affordable and equitable access to vaccines. This is the first World Bank financed operation in Africa to support a COVID-19 immunization plan and to help purchase and distribute vaccines under COVAX. The additional financing will be used to buy 400,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccines, as well as personal protective equipment, including masks and other medical supplies, to ensure an effective vaccine rollout. Tomorrow, 10.30, there'll be a virtual briefing by Agnes Calamard, the UN Special Rapporteur on Extrajudicial Summary and Arbitration Executions, along with Caroline Horm, the Senior Legal Advisor to Ms. Calamard, they will be discussing the finding of Ms. Kalamar's investigation into the January 8, 2020 shooting down of a Ukraine international airlines flight uh, that took place in the Islamic Republic of Iran. Um, and that will be on the WebEx platform if you want to join in person or just follow it on unwebtv.un.org to follow without asking questions. And we say thank you to our friends in Morocco. Uh, Rabat has paid its 2021 budget dues in full. We've uh, gone past the half century mark. We are now at 51. Uh, and I will give the floor to Celia, who seems very excited to ask a question. <laughs> or eager, at least. I don't know about excited, but eager. Um, about the uh, DRC. Mm -hmm. The attack occurred on a road that has been cleared for travel without security escorts, right? Um, isn't it the rule when you have officials, like an ambassador, to anywhere give escort to those officials? Look, uh, I think the whole system is looking into, um, into exactly what happened, obviously with the Congolese authorities, uh, as to details on how this uh, joint uh, this joint uh, mission was put together, I would ask you to talk to the World Food Program. Signore, and then we'll go to James. Two questions, if possible, on the same subject. Do you know what was the 
purpose of this uh, specific mission and in Italy there are some reports that the responsible are ruined this rebel do you have any element to confirm that sorry if you can take off your mask uh, I can I heard the first part of the question so I will answer that uh, which is that they were uh, they were traveling from Goma to visit a WFP school feeding uh, program in Ruchuru uh, in the so they were on that's they were taking the Italian ambassador uh, the Italian ambassador was going with them to visit uh, this school feeding program yeah the, the second question is in Italy there are reports that the responsible are most likely run this rebel do you have any element no, to not, confirm not at, not at this point uh, James and then Edie. Uh, yeah just a little bit more on this attack if I can um, so I mean I know we're going to have to get more and more um, uh, information um, off off the mission but um, the security for the Italian ambassador was being provided by the UN is that your understanding that he didn't have his own security he'd signed up to go with with the UN would he have been given a security briefing by the UN before going on this what what I do know uh, is that sadly his Italian bodyguard was also uh, killed. So he had an Italian security officer with him. As for the security of the joint uh, delegation, I think you would have to talk to WFP. And in terms of who might have been responsible, um, is this an area where the ADF are considered the greatest threat at the moment? Uh, there are a number of, uh, of of rebel groups operating in, in the area. So I think at this point, it's, uh, I don't want to point one direction or another. I have some other questions on other subjects, but perhaps. You will, you will yield the, <coughs> the balance of your time. <laughs> e <laughs> which, which there's quite a bit. So Edie and then Dulce. OK. Um, I was also going to ask, um, if somebody would be able to tell us, um, according to the AP story, uh, that road had been deemed to be safe. That's correct. I mean, that's what uh, we've heard from our WFP colleagues um, as well. Um, how are those decisions made? Or, or, or does the UN mission have any involvement in that? And how close were peacekeepers to uh, the actual site of where this happened. Uh, on your second part, we'd ha I'll have to uh, I'll have to check the the decisions about areas being safe or not safe. Those are internal, uh, you know, decisions made by the UN for the security of the whole of the UN family. Um, I had another uh, question on. Ethiopia and Tigray, uh, there's a report that um, six students returning from a graduation ceremony in Mekele were killed today. And I wondered whether the Secretary General had any comments on that. Uh, I had not seen that, that report. So let me take a look, and I'll get right back uh, to you. But if it is confirmed, it is to be uh, condemned in the, most, in the strongest possible terms. Uh, Dulce. Uh, yeah, do you have any details on the Pakistani peacekeeper who died over the weekend uh, working for UNAMED? Uh, it, the uh, Pakistan mission said it was an accident, but they didn't have any details. No, my, my understanding as well is that it was some T from what I recall, some type of a road uh, accident. But let me see if I can get a bit more on that. Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Stefan. My question is about the, uh, the comment by the International Atomic Energy Agency yesterday that uh, they made an agreement with Iran that from tomorrow there will be less access uh, the, to the nuclear sites any comments from the Secretary General? No, uh, that's, you know, the, the IEA is in the lead on these discussions, and it is up to them to uh, negotiate and uh, come to agreements with the Iranian, uh, with their uh, Iranian counterparts. Uh, and you and the SG for uh, multiple times asked, asked for uh, all parties to implement the uh, nuclear agreement, a Security Council resolution. Uh, is less access? to the site a violation of those resolution, no, re I, that's, resolutions? That's not for me to, uh, to opine on. What is important is that if agreements are taken, that those agreements be abided by. Uh, Mr. Vaccara. 
Kiss the fan or what happened in Congo. Um, some questions were already done, but I have a specific specific one. Is the local governor of um, uh, declared to Al Jazeera, according to Al Jazeera, that the ambassador was taken out of the car. There was an ask of money. Looks like the, the people that were uh, looking for money, and then because there was the uh, some, some some other some other forces arrived. They're talking about rangers from uh, uh, a nearby um, um, park, and then there was a shooting out, and then that's when the ambassador and his escort were killed. So, does it, do you have any information that say practically it was maybe it was an attack just for uh, money, but then because there was uh, somebody else, they intervened with the sh with the shooting out, and then that's when they you know. Look, there there are still there there are still a lot of details that need to be uh, clarified. Uh, investigations will have to be taken on by, obviously, by the Democratic Republic of the Congo authorities, as well as by the Italians and by uh, by the UN. So I think let's um, uh, we need to to wait a little bit until initial findings uh, can be uh, can be confirmed. I I have a, just a quick follow up because you mentioned that in fact it's one of the victim. The ambassador was uh, was escorted by one carabiniere that. It's not really an escort one, he's only one, but still he's some a person that he uh, has weapons on him. Uh, is this when the UN has its own escort? I mean, if, if the UN has, uh, has uh, provides escort, does, uh, th this means that they usually diplomats don't bring over their own, or, or do you know about this? Just to, Look, to let, find let, out let, if let, the Carabinieri let, was... Let, let, let me, first of all, I, I don't want to speak about the operational details of of this joint uh, joint visit and and the investigation because I don't have the details yet and we don't want to speculate. What I can tell you, it is not out of the ordinary in any way. Uh, if there is a uh, an ambassador or a representative traveling with the UN for that person to also have their own. Uh, their own security, uh, security, a close protection, uh, a close protection officer. That that is not out of the ex extraordinary. In fact, that is out. That is within the ordinary. But that's just a a, a, a principled uh, answer. It's not. I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to speak about the operational details of of what happened in uh, in in the uh, in the eastern part of the Congo. Uh, if to car, then we'll go back to James for the balance of his time. <clears throat> Thank you, Steph. Again, a lot of questions have been asked about this tragic incident in uh, DRC, but I would like to know whether MONESCO has activated and is taking action to hunt down the attackers. Well, uh, the, the peacekeepers have been fully, uh, uh, fully mobilized. We will be working uh, with our Congolese counterpart in the investigation. Mr. Bayes. Yes, so uh, just a couple of loose ends on, on, on this tragic incident. Um, first, um, one assumes if there was an ambassador present, there would have been a senior UN official, someone to accompany him. Who was leading the delegation it from the World Food Program? Who? Uh, from the World uh, I, I don't know who, who individually from the World Food Program. What level? No. We no. Can, uh, but, I, you know, I, I also think, and again, I don't want to... I, I'm not speaking about this particular incident because we don't have all the details the investigation going on. It is also within the ordinary in places where the UN has programs for uh, local ambassadors to travel with various agency uh, delegates to go visit programs that they may be funding one way or another. So one more follow-up on that. The Italian ambassador, to your knowledge, was the only delegation as part of it. There were no other diplomats from other countries involved That's in correct. this trip, That's to your correct. knowledge. Okay. A um, couple of other subject areas, if I could. Um, a leading politician, opposition politician, Saif Bam Bampokori, 
um, shot dead in South Africa, a Rwandan opposition politician. This is not the first time that there have been suspicious deaths of Rwandan opposition figures in South Africa. Does the UN have any reaction? Well, we would want to see the, uh, this, uh, this, um, this crime fully, fully investigated uh, by the South African authorities. And one on South Sudan. I, this is from social media, so I would be interested to know if you have anything more on this and whether you can confirm this. But this uh, suggests that peacekeepers of Tigrayan origin are being detained and physically abused at Juba Airport by Ethiopian soldiers um, who one assumes are not of Tigrayan descent. Um, and that actually 15 of them are being protected currently by UNHCR. Have you got anything you can tell us on that? Yes. Uh, what I can do and confirm uh, to you is that um, uh, this morning, uh, 169 members of the Ethiopian uh, contingent were due to rotate out of uh, Juba and replaced by fresh uh, contingent. It's a part of a normal uh, rotation. I must say the, the Ethiopians have been providing a very good uh, support uh, and work to, uh, to our peacekeeping mission there. Uh, we're trying to get the details, but I do understand about 15 members of the contingent chose not to board uh, the flight uh, at the Juba airport. Uh, they have now uh, they have now uh, asked for um, uh, they've asked to stay. They are receiving uh, support from the South Sudanese Ministry of uh, Refugee Affairs. UNHCR is also uh, aware, and they're they're in contact with the South Sudanese authorities. Um, it's important to underscore that any person in need of international protection has the right to seek asylum. Uh, and UNHCR has consistently advocated that refugees and asylum seekers uh, have been confirmed or claimed to be in need of international protection uh, according to the principles of non refoulement cannot be returned to their countries of origin if they feel their lives or their freedom uh, could be uh, could be threatened. So it is something we are um, we're following very closely. Okay. So a cu couple of questions on that. Um, they are now these fifteen who do not want to return to Ethiopia are now separate from the other force members who it has been suggested on social media were in some way abusing them. They are now separate, or are they still with other? Um, Ethiopian no, troops. my understanding. My understanding is that the flight left, and they did not board. And they're they're being kept. Uh, but what I'm saying is, there's no other Ethiopian soldiers or officers. No, or I'm, anyone I'm, else my, my understanding is, is that they're being a, they're, a, a, a say in their fate. No, they are. Uh, they they have the right uh, to claim asylum and to ask for protection. Uh, as I say, UNHCR is following this with the S South Sudanese authorities, and to the best of my knowledge, uh, they are in a safe place. And last question, just to clarify, these were um, working as UN peacekeepers in the South Sudan mission or in the Abyei mission? South Sudan mission, as far as I'm, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, South Sudan. Okay, uh, Signore, and then uh, back to Edie. You know, Stefan, if the uh, drone uh, provided by Italy to Monusco are still operative, and if by chance they were flying during the no, accident. I do not know, but we can check. Edie. Uh, on these 15 soldiers who were in South Sudan, can you confirm that they were um, Eritrean ethnicity? No, it, no, it's not something I can uh, confirm. I think. No, it's not. Uh, they are Ethiopian citizens. What their ethnic background is not something I can. Um, yes, confirm. So, in news as we speak that I, I know of, but you probably know about it already. Um, apparently, tweeted uh, the Ethiopian Prime Minister 
has just tweeted saying that he has been speaking to the Secretary General. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a readout on that call? Uh, did he talk about this specific case during uh, that no, call? No, this is and, part and, and, and also, um, what was the Secretary <coughs> General's message for him with regard to Tigray? Uh, what I do know is that the Secretary General had two phone calls this morning, one with the Prime Minister of Ethiopia and one with the Prime Minister of Sudan, Mr. Hamdok, and it is part of his continuing efforts to help diffuse uh, the tensions between Ethiopia and Sudan. Uh, if there's any more of a readout, I, need to, I haven't had a chance to speak to the SG about it uh, yet this morning. Okay, uh, Brendan, say something and we'll wave. Hello, everyone. Can you all hear me? Yep. Uh, and then we'll see you back after Brendan is done with Jean-Pierre Lacroix. And we do have our very kind interpreters with us for that. Go ahead. Thank you, Stefan.